9 millimeter subcompact pistol versus revolver, stub nose revolver. And what I have today is our spear gold dot ammunition. And 9 millimeter is our 115 grain gold dot hollow point. Just our basic standard pressure gold dot. So I want to see what we get in performance between a semi-automatic pistol and a revolver. See if there's a whole lot of gas loss and everything like that. See how this stuff performs. So this is a 3.2 inch Taurus G2C and our 2 inch barrel Taurus 905. You might say, well, that has 1.2 inches more barrel travel. And actually it does not because when we measure a semi-automatic pistol, we're including the chamber. And when we're measuring the barrel of a revolver, we are not including that chamber. So the back of the chamber here and the back of the cylinder here, well, those line up there. What we actually have is a little bit more barrel travel, you know, part of that cylinder travel, but more travel in that gun with our revolver versus our semi-automatic pistol. So in theory, we should get similar velocities, but the, the cylinder gas loss might happen with our revolver, but I'm actually not really sure if we're going to get cylinder gas loss. So I'm going to look at our rate of velocity here. I didn't look it up. Uh, I don't see it anywhere in the box. I believe it's 1,200 feet per second, either that or 1,220, which is pretty decent rating for a 9 millimeter. So we're going to go through the chronograph, see what kind of velocity and accuracy we get at the same time. Then I'm going to do my 10% clear ballistic test. We're going to go into plain clear ballistics to see what the best potential of those cartridges are. And the reason why I do that, you know, a lot of people just start off with just using denim on the front. The reason why I do plain clear ballistics is because I want to see, you know, what it's supposed to look like when, it, when the hollow point expands. Sometimes we never get hollow point expansion with the denim in, in place. So I like to uh, kind of see what it's supposed to do first. And then I do more of our real world simulation where I have four layers of denim right here on this first three inch piece that represents our pectoral muscle after that. We'll have a quarter inch medium density fiberboard to represent heading ribs or sternum. That's more of our real world simulation. So we'll do that test as well. And then I am going to shoot at my steel target to see what kind of practical accuracy I can get with these. See if one gun has more recoil or less. So let's get started with this test. All right, our Spirit Gold Dot 115 grain. I just looked this up. It's rated at 1210 feet per second through a four inch barrel. So through our 3.2 inch Taurus G2C. Let's see how close we get to 1,210 feet per second. Eleven twelve. Eleven twenty nine. Eleven twenty five. Eleven thirteen. Eleven forty six. So yeah, we're losing a little bit, about what you would expect to lose uh, from a four inch barrel down to a three point two inch. So we're right there, you know, probably eleven twenty twenty five feet per second on average there. Um, so we're going to see how much gas loss we get. So also in addition to that, I did color one of these cartridges around the base of the exposed bullet in the case mouth with black marker to see if we have any bullet creep out. I don't think we will. These are sealed, I believe, from the bullet and as well as the primer end. So we'll see how close we get to the semi-auto pistol here. Seventeen. Eleven twenty-five. One thousand sixty-two. One thousand ninety. Take a look at this last bullet here, and there may be a little creep, but it's definitely not very much at all. There is just a tad. Uh, but when they seal those, it's kind of like a gummy glue. It does hold that in place pretty well. So. Let's get one more velocity read here. 1,082. So on average, yeah, um, we have a little bit of gas loss there and velocity loss. Um, that first couple shots, I thought, you know, we weren't losing any. Overall, the average isn't too bad of a loss, though. But it might be just enough that it might not perform particularly well in the revolver. It might perform in the semi-auto. I don't know. But let's find out. We'll hit our ballistics gel block with both of these guns with this ammo see how they both compare in the different guns all right our best potential shot in the plain clear ballistics going through our semi-automatic pistol let's see what this does all right let's do it to the revolver see how it compares 
Let's go take a look. All right, so I'm not really seeing a huge difference here between the two of these other than we have a little bit more penetration with the revolver shot. That could just be, you know, a variance between round to round where one had more velocity. But our bottom and our top here, bottom semi-auto, top revolver, really no difference there, to be honest. Energy dump, transfer, all of that tearing looks really good with both of these. Our penetration with our semi-auto, we went to about... 13 and three quarters inches. I know that sometimes that bolt looks like it's the track looks like it's going further up this way away from my finger. That's just from camera parallax. But yeah, we're at 13 and three quarters inches of penetration. We have good expansion. With our revolver, we got about 14 and a half, so only three quarters of an inch more penetration through our revolver, and it does look like we have good expansion. So, you know, that's hard to say. If there's really a difference there because it could just be a, vari a variation from one round to the other but through playing gel we can say they both perform so let's put on our denim put in our mdf and see how they compare and more of our real world simulation all right more of our real world simulation four layers of denim three inches of clear ballistics a quarter inch mdf let's see how our semi-auto does all right let's set that up a little bit more and we'll hit it with our snub nose revolver how this compares let's go take a look all right so we definitely had some differences going on here a little bit um, because our penetration is significantly different from one to the other. But judging from what I'm looking at, both of them look like they didn't do that good. Because <laughs> going through our MDF, uh, neither of them really appeared to expand at all. Almost looks like there's a little more keyholing going on with our revolver shot versus our semi-auto shot. And what we got going on here is pretty good damage with both shots. A little bit more up here with our semi-auto, but looking at these it does look like both of them tried to expand but just couldn't they just were just not able to fully expand out with our semi-auto you know we got about 18 and three quarters inches which is not too bad it's not over penetration in my book uh, because clear ballistics you know it'll go a little bit deeper in, in clear ballistics than organic gel so or organic gel we'd probably be at like 17 inches so it's not over penetration so Based on that, what we're seeing here is I think we're dumping more energy, so it just kind of slowed down. There's a little more resistance there from the gel, so the um, you know the, the semi-auto shot stopped a little bit sooner. Now with our revolver shot, it looks like eh, a little bit less velocity and resistance, so it just slid through more material a little bit easier. And we're at about 21 and three quarters inches of penetration. Again, not really over penetration. You might be talking about, you know, 19 and three quarters in organic gel. A little bit over penetration, but not significant. So looking at this, you know, I'm seeing that there's not really a big difference between shooting this particular ammo in a semi-auto versus revolver. We definitely have a little bit of an advantage in the, in the semi-auto and its terminal ballistics performance. So let's take these out of the block. We'll take a close-up look at them. Then I'm going to shoot our steel see what kind of difference there is in practical accuracy recoil and all that for me so let's do that all right so here's a close-up look at these bullets here these are the ones through the plain gel there's really not a whole lot of difference there between them uh here it is through the semi-auto pistol really fantastic expansion and we pretty much have the same size expansion it looks to me with the uh, revolver shot very similar overall so we had enough velocity right there, upper 10s to 1,100 feet per second to expand really well. Now going through our medium density fiberboard, this is where things are a little bit different here. Here's our semi-auto shot. We see that, you know, several of those puddles are attempting to peel back. And we got a little bit of expansion, but it's not really that significant. But it was enough expansion at, at that 
to not over penetrate. And we can see why we had kind of maybe a tumbling looking look through our MDF and also over, over penetration. We had basically one and a half petals start, start to expand out and that denim is still in that hollow point as where the denim kicked out through our semi-auto. So pretty much what that's gonna tell you is that you know the velocity of this, this is probably going 11, 25 feet per second. This is probably going maybe 35 feet per second slower. There was enough difference there. That's pretty much your threshold for you know how this stuff is gonna work. We, we would definitely want more velocity than this to work through our MDF. We probably need 30 feet per second more for this to expand out to you know half an inch and look pretty decent. So a little bit subpar ammunition for these short barrels, uh, but our semi-auto shot did, did just a little bit better than our revolver shot here. But overall, very similar performance being shot through that snub nose revolver versus a subcompact pistol. So that's a close up look at those bullets. All right, 12 yards from the target. I want to see if there's any practical dis difference here. So I'm just going to pull up. I'm going to get a good sight, front sight picture. Pop off five rounds, see if there's a big difference for shootability for me. So here's our semi-auto here. And this did jump up a little bit, even in a semi-auto for me, where it's, you know, I kind of lose my grip a little bit. They're pretty sharp recoiling rounds. A revolver here, I believe the semi-auto weighs something like 20 ounces, and this is something like 22, 23. Uh, it's hard to know because they list the loaded weight with this, but not with the, well, maybe they do with the other one, but this is a little heavier, but not by much. So let's see how I can get the revolver. Anyway, a little bit different point of aim and impact. That could just be uh, the way I'm looking through the sights and just not be able to get a good front sight picture as much with this all steel sight here. So. You notice I don't have any more moon clips. I broke every one of them. Just trying to simply unload and load them. I'll pick up some more, but hey, it still runs without the moon clips. So let's back it up a little, see how these continue to shoot for me. All right, 75 yards from the target. I'm back this far, mainly just for fun, but also, you know, stretching the distance out is definitely going to probably show greater differences between the accuracy between the two of these. Because if there's a little minor issues that that nine millimeter might have going through a revolver it's going to amplify it at this distance so i want to see if i can hit that target and see if there's a really wide difference on the on some accuracy so semi auto here let's see what i can do with this So when I started making hits, I started aiming basically at the head on that target there. So I think a lot of them must have been going pretty low. What impacts I can see are kind of low. So yeah, I think they were just dropping at that distance. Now, revolver, will this make a big difference? I don't know. I'm gonna go single action here, see if I can see any difference at all. So I think this is doing the opposite thing. I'm aiming, you know, when I missed, I was aiming a little bit high and then I started aiming low and started hitting. So what's happening here is a pretty much a revolver only phenomenon where you get a little bit of recoil. I think it's coming out from the cylinder gap and pushing the gun, the muzzle up a little bit. So in reality, you're actually aiming high because at the moment the bullet leaves, you're aiming high. Uh, but to me, I'm actually aiming low when I press off that shot, so. Keep going here. Uh, 
Well, I was doing really good and then I started doing really bad here. Um, so I might have to stop doing the 75 yard stuff, you know, since I've gotten to my mid 40s, I can barely see anymore from this distance. So looking at both of these here, uh, yeah, well, both of these guns, I should say, because there's one ammo type. But look at how the, how the performance does through both of these. It's not bad performance overall, but what I think I'm seeing here pretty much is telling me that when you go to a little bit of a shorter barrel, I think we pretty much need to push it up to a plus P to get good performance because I did test the Federal HST and a 124 grain plus P through this snub. We had fantastic expansion. So I, I can't look at the HST and say, you know, that did good and this did bad because that was a 124 plus P. We really do need to test the 124 plus P in the, in the spear gold dot as well like this to, to really call that. But what I'm seeing here is it's not bad performing ammo, but it does look like that, you know, being a standard pressure 115 grain, we're lacking a little bit on the power level to get that good expansion going through more of our real world simulation. That being said, these are both very shootable rounds uh, through the revolver, especially there's almost no recoil, no felt recoil to me really. And the semi-auto is a little bit sharp recoil not not a heavy recoil but just a little bit of sharpness to it uh, but through the revolver that was pretty mild recoil so looking at the shootability versus the fact that it did expand in plain gel and it didn't significantly over penetrate through a real world simulation it's not bad now would i pick this no because obviously there's better choices out there but if i had nothing but a box of this and i said you know this is what i got to run through these I'd definitely use it because it's not too bad overall. I really think that the standard pressure stuff is really meant for like duty size guns, four inch barrels plus, uh, because you get enough velocity with the standard pressure there to perform really well. And you know, even though it's kind of counterintuitive to go to a plus P in a shorter barrel, because you're gonna, you know, you're already having more recoil because the gun's smaller and you're adding it more on top of that, you pretty much need to do that. You pretty much need to have a plus P round through a subcompact pistol to match the standard pressure velocity uh, through a longer barrel pistol to get you know that pretty good performance. But as it is, this 115 grain isn't too bad, but in these short barrels, you know, there's better choices. So that's what you get today. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.